You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here is your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Glenn Geek in Ocala, Florida. And I'm Jamie Jennings, and I'm back in Norman, Oklahoma. You're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Wednesday, November 6th, episode 3556, brought to you by our new title sponsor, Poseidon Health. Hello, Horse World. It's Wednesday, the day you start daydreaming of a weekend with your horses. We'll help you get there with more silly horse talk on Horses in the Morning. Well, we have a fun show planned for you today. Artist and auditor Jessica Troop joins us with her 2024 HRN Holiday Art. She does art for us every year. I think this is her fifth year, something like that. And she tells us about the charity she is supporting this year. And we'll tell you how you can buy all kinds of cool stuff with our HRN Art on it this year. Uh, Laurel, owner of uh, uh, Alari? Alari? I'm going to Larry. Uh, tells <laughs> okay. us about her product called Muzzle Butter and what it a can Larry? do for you. I'd say a Larry. A Larry? Okay. I know how to say muzzle butter. I can say that. <laughs> and what it can do for your horse. What the heck is muzzle butter? Plus, we hear all about Jamie's Dollywood adventure. And do we have weird news? We definitely have some weird news, although I'm disappointed in the amount of people that send it in. All of you, y- you're behind. Come on, well, everybody. They were all thinking about something else, I guess. <laughs> well, we know we're all a little tired today, and some of us are grouchy and some of us are happy, but Jamie's really tired, and she'll tell you why she's so tired and why I was so nervous this morning until I heard from her. Uh, <laughs> we're going to tell, <laughs> tell you about that right after Daily Winnie's. Happy birthday to a bunch of our auditors, Sarah Reach, Serenity Lemons, Marge Klenner, and Rachel Wiley. Happy birthday to all of you. Hey. We hope you have a tremendous day. Rachel just did the clinic here. Oh, did she? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I leave town, and, like, they had predicted a little bit of rain. Okay, cool. Like, it'll be fine. We need some rain. Yeah, it was, like, three days of tornadoes. So At your I house. To... Not where you were going, but at your house. Like, literally my house i love to leave my house and um have apocalyptic events happen and leave it to ginger and farm boy to like hey guys how's it going oh i don't know it's just like you know sirens been going off for three hours (laughs) i guess the sirens went off for three hours in the middle of the night so Uh, ginger and farm boy thank you so much for taking care everybody is all good everybody's healthy and happy and we didn't get hit with any tornadoes I guess they um, did right above you, though, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But a couple. Well, I mean, about five miles north, they got hit one neighborhood and just I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And they, I'm tired of hearing. Oh, my God. This never happens. <laughs> like it never happens. I, I add another one to the list because they're like, we don't have tornadoes in November. That's not a thing. Oh wait, hold on. It happens. Like I'm so tired of hearing it never happens. But anyway, thank you to Ginger and Farm Boy for taking care of things. And yes, I am absolutely exhausted. So I wanted to give a little shout out to my husband Chad for being just. Oh my God, like he can like slip into airline pilot mode so fast. And what I mean is, so all of these storms, so we fly when we, we just went to Tennessee, to the mountains, to Dolly World, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, and to see all the, the leaves and do all the things there. And time to, time to go. So we go to, we're heading to the airport and this we're like, yesterday, right? Yeah. 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 I'm like, oh my God. Why are there no seats? So he works for American Airlines. So we fly standby, which is if there's an empty seat, we get it. And we get to the airport and there's there's nothing. I mean, there's nothing like I mean, I was like, we 
We're never leaving. Let's, I, let's I, I be honest, to... though. You were flying out of Knoxville, which has like three flights a day. So no, the, actually, there's a lot. There's a really? lot of flights there. Yeah. And American has a hub uh, in Dallas, and they have a hub in Charlotte and Chicago. So like the, all of these places had direct flights, but we couldn't get out of Knoxville. And it's because of the storms that have been going across the country, the tornadoes and everything. They canceled a ton of flights on Monday night. Uh... So all those people that are that were supposed to be on flights Monday night had to cancel due to weather. And so now Tuesday, all those people are rebooked on those empty seats that I was supposed to take. And I was so we're looking and we're looking at every airline. We're looking at everything. And we're stuck here. We're stuck. We're stuck in the airport. And we're going to sit in the airport for days until all this blows over. And everybody that was canceled on the previous flights gets a seat. And I just was like, I can't do it. I can't sit here for days checking flights and looking at my phone. I can't do it. So I went down and I met I met a young man named Jacob. Jacob works for Alamo. <laughs> And I went to the Alamo desk. I will rent Alamo cars for the rest of my life. So I go up to the desk and there's this guy standing there. And I was like, hi, my name is Jamie. This is my friend, Anna. And apparently we live here now. So <laughs> he was like, excuse me. And I was like, we're never leaving. And I was wondering if, and by the way, I've been checking this online and no, no go anywhere. Like you can't do this. I was like, I would like to rent a car one way right now and drive to Oklahoma. And he looks at me and he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, no, seriously. Otherwise I'm going to be here for days. So please, there are two children and my husband and I would like to rent a car and drive one way to Oklahoma. And he was like, okay. I was like, excuse what? And so he looks around and it turns out that in the Knoxville airport, there was like a Alamo convention of employees. And he was like the big boss for Alamo. Oh. <laughs> and I just happened to walk up to him because he was like the late. He goes, OK, I need you to go ahead and handle this, Christine. And he was like, what kind of car would you like? And I was like, I would like a minivan. <laughs> he was like, OK, well, we'll get you a minivan. And literally for like a hundred bucks, I drew, we got a car to drive from Knoxville to Oklahoma, which is 13 hours uh, without stops. What time did you leave there? We left there at one in the afternoon oh, no. and we arrived at two o'clock this morning, which with the time change would have been three o'clock because there's a you know, different yeah. time zone. So yeah, we drove basically, we got here at the equivalent of three o'clock in the morning and my husband, just like a boss, just, he just settles into the car. Just, I didn't, he wouldn't even let me drive. I was like, I'll drive. He's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. He's like airline pilot mode sits down in that seat and just like kicks yeah, into let's gear. Let's be fair. In airline pilot mode, he has automatic pilot. He doesn't do anything. He <laughs> <laughs> Well, he has to do something when he's driving cars. And of course, it like rained a couple times. We went through some massive storms and he's just like, I mean, the dude is like, I mean, I would have been freaking out and I was freaking out. And he's just like, it's fine. I'm like, you were too close to the tractor trailer next to us. Oh my God, they're going to hit us. He's like, I got it. We're fine. The most we're special fine. Part, stressful part of his trip was you. Yes, obviously. Like, I thank God I'm not his co-pilot in an airplane because I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like, I'm a disaster. But he just drove the whole way and he was awesome. And so, yeah, I got a couple hours of sleep and here I am. And so glad Wait, I texted Anna is Glenn. getting all the experiences here in the United States. Oh my God! She just saw half the country, crazy. actually, right in the middle. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, it, so it, it's a very tough part of the country because literally we're in Knoxville and then we go through Nashville Which and then we go joy. through Memphis. Yeah. It's like all Tennessee, and then we hit Arkansas and go through like Little Rock and then across and then we're home. I mean, but it, it was the same freeway yep. the whole way <laughs> up until like our house. So yeah, it was a long drive, but I just. So we started looking at the flights like at two o'clock in the morning. We're just, I'm just like bored and trying to entertain Chad. And I was like, we, oh my God, we could have got home. And he was like, what? And I'm like, 12 p.m. tomorrow, oh. 12 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> so we would still be there right now. The earliest we could get out from what I was seeing on all the flights is we would arrive here at midnight tonight. And I just can't I'm do glad it. I'm you're home. <laughs> 
Oh man, I'm glad we're home too. I'm glad that drive is over. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> the kids were great. Everybody was. They were like road trip. But I'm like, God bless. I don't want to sit in a dang car. Well, they weren't saying that at two in the morning, though, were they? They did. They were great. They were great. Yeah. We played like you know, Anna. We're 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 playing um. We're, and we're making notes of like what states we're finding uh, license plates in. Yeah, we did that. We used to do <laughs> yes. that too. Because we that was free, like, free oh cell God. phones when we do those trips when you had nothing. There was no you electronics. There was well, nothing. Well, Lucas got, got grounded for his electronics. So he spent the first like 10 hours in the car with no electronics. Oh, and finally, no. Chad and I were like, okay, fine. <laughs> we used to really play the good. alphabet game. You used to look for signs for oh, yeah. all the letters in the alphabet. Yeah. You should have heard her squeal when she saw an Alaska one. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just things you do when you're in the car for 13 hours. Yes. <laughs> the alphabet game, the license plate game, and then the we used to try and we we take signs that were in order and write down all the words that were on the signs and try and make sentences out of them. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, there was really nothing to do on those long trips. Well, here's what I did, and this is this is kind of an announcement that you don't even know about, Glenn. So. But a little backstory. We had a hailstorm here about a month ago and they totaled the insurance company, totaled my trailers, totaled my, all my yeah, shed buildings. Like out buildings. <laughs> yeah. We played it on the air. Yeah. It was hitting my, it sounded like we were under attack. You know, it was crazy. So anyway, I just got a big check. Uh-huh. I, I got, I got, I got like, I got a big check and I, and Chad and I were like, what are we going to do with this check? And I was like, we are not saving it. We're marching towards death. We are buying the things that we want. And he's like, well, what Which do you want? the things that you want. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Well, yes. no, he's good. He'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> He'll get what he wants. So we do have to put a new roof on the house, which is really going to suck. But we have like all this money. And so what am I going to do with it? I bought. Are you sitting down? Are you ready for this? I bought a PEMF machine. Oh wow! I have wanted a PEMF forever, like forever. And I always said, like, if I ever get you need an insurance check to buy one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I bought the Pulse PEMF machine, oh, yeah. and it came the day, like the the day we left. So I have these boxes sitting in my house, and I'm so excited. But it comes with a. You don't have to get certified, but you can do a certification. Well, you do have but, to know how to use a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but this certification, a lot of people, so when you go to get your PMF, we talked about it on the show. This is how I learned about it was a lot of yes. people don't get certified, That's right. but I was like, why would you do somebody who doesn't really know what the hell they're doing? So, but it's like five, six hours to get certified. That's what I did in the car, there baby. You go. <laughs> I officially am Pulse PEMF certified, <laughs> and I'm going to crack up in my machine today. I'm going to pulse. You're going to pulse everybody everything and everything. Everybody's going to be chickens. shocked today. I'm like, this is going to be so good for Danny's arthritis, and oh my gosh, Raisin, maybe this will help fix his brain because he's so crazy and weird and then i'm like oh my gosh my back hurts I, like, i'm just thinking i'm so excited so we gotta end the show so i can start well, with, electric- your, with all the horses you get in they all need it so it's oh, it's perfect it- it's going to be such a great service to offer other horses that come in for training. And I mean, just my friends and I'm just so excited to be able to do that. Like my mother-in-law's feet hurt. I'm like, get over here, but pulse your feet. <laughs> well, thank you. Big ass hail. Huh? I know. I know. And and then we have, a, we have a couple other things that we have in the works that are going to improve the farm. Yes. I did not get enough to buy a covered arena. Just mm, so yeah. you know. That is not That'd a have to thing. Be some really big hail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll down a couple more structures. But yeah, no. So I'm not getting out covered arena, but just a lot of little things to improve the farm. So like, you know, we have a manual gate, and we're gonna get. And this is one thing everybody says when they come. It's like, how do you not have an electric? Yeah, gate? I know, I know. We. <laughs> I'm sick of it's ours come. already. We just moved in. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I will be dropping little tidbits of things. We're still like, I mean, we just got the check today, and we've already blown through it mentally. So <laughs> we'll, well see what we actually. I- do. I can't wait to hear about the pulse machine. Uh, tell us Friday. I know you'll have used it by Friday. So we, let's get a report on that. And also at the end of the show today, maybe before weird news, I want to find out how your trip to Dollywood was because uh, yes. we love that place. So I want to find out if you guys liked it or hated it. Uh, I, I don't know yet. I haven't heard. So I'm, I'm excited to see. We never do, We never agree on movies or TV shows. We'll see if we agree on amusement parks. We agree on nothing ever. So no. we'll see how this goes. <laughs> 
Well, I'm really also excited to see that Poseidon Animal Health is our new title sponsor. That's so cool because remember we had her on from poop Poseidon week. Animal Health. Yes, on Poop Week. And she sent me, I talked about Raisin. His name is Hellraiser and he's just the craziest little thing. And he he didn't want to eat. Like he just does not really want to eat. He did. He self mutilates. He just, he's a disaster of a horse. And he, but he really didn't want to eat. She sent me some of the digestive HP for him. Oh my God. He is like 180 degree difference. This horse really? is wow. ravenous stands at the barn waiting for me to bring. He's the first what? one up. He want, he's like desperate to eat food now. And I give it to digestive HP because, oh my gosh, like how incredible of a change this horse has had and his coat looks better and he'll eat the whole dang thing. It's like a powder and it's a big scoop of powder and he just wolfs it down. He loves it. And I just want to thank Poseidon. I'm so excited they're a sponsor because I just love their supplement digestive HP. It just changed. That's come in handy for a lot of your thoroughbreds coming in that are bad eaters. Yes, yeah. yes. I definitely would be pur purchasing more, but it's a ginormous 10 pound container. So it lasts a long time and it's not a big plastic tub. It's a bag. So I'm like, I'm not having this big plastic tub everywhere, you know, but anyway, digestive HP is what they sent me and it has changed that horse's life. He is now a like too much. If y'all could give me like one to <laughs> dial it back a little bit because now he loves food. But well, anyway, but they also, yeah, I'm super excited and I'm so glad they're a sponsor. Our, they have stress paste and this is their ad here. They can help them stay calm and focused. If you're worried about your horse's digestive, digestive HP and the gut health reset pack promotes a healthy gut. Anyway, it's PoseidonAnimalHealth.com. Visit that, PoseidonAnimalHealth.com. Well, we have Laurel joining us now. She is the owner of a company that Jamie and I disagree how to say, and we're going to find out really how to say it. But she has a cool product that we wanted to find out a little more about. I actually think that Ashley, who is our guest booker, found you on Instagram or someplace. So, so that's how we got a hold of you. And we like highlighting really cool products toward the holidays, too. So, Laurel, where are you out of? Yeah, I'm out of Austin, Texas. It's somewhere I've lived all my life in Texas, recently moved to Austin, and I really love it down here. Do you have horses? I do. I have one. His name is Pretzel. He is a <laughs> rescued Andalusian. Oh, really? Jamie, there you go. Andalusian sister. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're such great horses. <laughs> <laughs> is yours fat like Jamie's? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Is yours overweight like Jamie's? Uh, no, just kidding. He's 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 all right. He's uh, you know, <laughs> I think they I think they uh, tend towards fluffiness a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big boned. They're big boned. So you tell us how to say the name of the company because I think we both got it wrong. Yeah, I I kind of intentionally made it so that you don't really know how to say it. You um, succeeded kind of at that. We, we, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> how do you say it? Uh, but it's. It's named after the dressage horse Alaric, so it's Allery. Allery, okay. Well, we were close, I think. So, what? <laughs> so, tell us about Allery, the company you have. Yeah, so Allery Equine Products is a. It's a brand that I think that a lot of the horse world needs. Our main focus is on horses' mental health in a way that's natural and non-invasive. Our main product is our muzzle butter product, our muzzle butter line. One of our, our best products in that line is muzzle butter at ease. And it's a essential oils based product that applies to the nose and it provides a scent based, all natural calming solution for horses who struggle with anxiety. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, we have Dr. Wendy is a good friend of ours and been with us for 14 years here at the network. And she's a Chinese medicine veterinarian, a veterinarian and a Chinese medicine doctor as well. And she she really loves essential oils. Yeah, they really are amazing. I think that I think they do get a bad rap. But there's, a you know, the reason that we use the essential oils that we do in our product is because they are so heavily backed by science. We don't want to provide any products that are going to be, you know, perceived in a way that's, that's anything other than something that's intentionally made to actually help horses. And it really does. We have had, 
you know, thousands of people that just really have transformed their relationship with their horse because of our product. And that's our goal. And it, the thing is, is 100%, I mean, you say 100% vegan ingredients. I mean, it's 100% natural, by, you know, and even the packaging is biodegradable. Exactly. Yeah. Being eco-friendly more, more than, you know, just the label of eco-friendly is it's really important to me as a person. I myself am vegan and I try everything I can to ensure that I'm making choices that are good for the planet. You know, 90% of consumer waste actually comes from the <laughs> from the actual company that's providing the product and only 10% of that really follows falls onto the the end consumer. So I very much aware of that and I try as much as I can to provide products that people think would not only be a good choice for their horse but a good choice morally for the planet. So muzzle butter, is it used as a maintenance thing all the time, like every day, or is it used when, when you're going to be trailering or going to a show, you know, when stress levels are higher? Mm. You know, the great thing about it is you can use it depending on what your personal horse needs. When you're looking at something like a magnesium supplement or a calming paste, a magnesium supplement you would use all the time. And a calming paste you would use before a super stressful event. The great thing about muzzle butter eddies is that you can use it as frequently or as scarcely as you think your horse needs in whatever situation that your horse feels that anxiety to help them out with it. It is FEI and USCF legal, so if you want to use it, it shows you can do that. But my my favorite thing about it that kind of makes it different from something like a, a feed supplement or a paste or something like that is that it's non-invasive, that you're not fundamentally changing who your horse is from the inside out in order to get your desired results of reduced anxiety or reduced spookiness for, you know, the hour that you're riding them. Does that make sense? It makes yes, sense. you're not sedating yeah. them. You're just giving them a, a, a different something to breathe. And I love the product because I love how it's in a almost like a cardboard deodorant stick. If only actual deodorants could come like that, it would be great. But yeah, <laughs> I love that it is the whole thing. You, it, it just goes goes right away. I love it. My hackney pony scooter, who the listeners know very well, gets anxiety when I'm two minutes late feeding him every day. I need to just <laughs> slather him in this stuff because... Just put it in his bucket. <laughs> he'll find... It. Hackney ponies find any reason to be stressed about something. You know, it's just, it's just the way they are. <laughs> and he, by the way, looks like your horse. Also a little big boned for a hackney pony. <laughs> I love this. And I love that you're thinking outside. I love that you're thinking outside the box. And I also love that you're sticking with your core values, right? You're a vegan and you're trying to treat your horse as naturally as possible. And we've learned on this show over the years. I mean, the Chi, our Chi University episode comes out this week. And you know what? They, that's what it's all about. It's all about natural and Chinese. The Chinese are the ones who have been way ahead of us on this by about a couple thousand years. So uh, That's right. <laughs> we're just catching up. So it does have lavender in it, obviously something we're we're familiar with. A vetiver? I'm not sure about what's that oil, vetiver. Yeah, vetiver and patchouli, they are both they're both just a couple of different plant oils. Vetiver is is one that is often called the <laughs> in Chinese medicine actually. It's often referred to as the oil of tranquility. I need some of that. It has, yeah, it's pretty great. And <laughs> Half the country needs that today. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> patchouli is one that it does have reported calming products or calming, calming effects, but we don't specifically list any in our studies because there haven't really been any studies on patchouli. But the reason that we make sure we include it despite the lack of studies, is because there are a lot of studies that show it, is, it has antibacterial qualities. So just to make sure that as many times as you're applying this to your horse, who is <laughs> probably less than 100% clean, it's always going to be a safe application. Yeah. And patchouli actually is, is something that I, I know it's part of the mint family, if I remember right, too. I, I know I've seen some tea made out of it. So, yes. yeah, yeah. Well, where can people get it? Yeah, you can get it at allery.com, A-H-L-E-R-I.com. We sell it straight from our website. If you are 
If you are looking for a physical you know, shop to go to, we have a list of our retailers. We also have several retailers in other countries and distributors in other countries like the UK, Europe, Australia, and several other countries. So if you are outside of the U.S., check out our retail page and you can look at where you can find our products. That's terrific. And we'll put a link to that in our show notes as well. Thank you for enjoy- or joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. I had a, I had a great time. All right. Take care. And I do have to disclaim that that was not a paid spot, actually, that we just had her on as a guest because <laughs> it was something fun. We like looking at different stuff and you know, we have over the years. And when it comes to the holidays, this is a great stocking stuffer for anybody with a horse, right? So it's yeah, a perfect I mean, stocking stuffer. What I like about it is it's not a sedative. It's just it's just oil. It's yeah. just an essential oil. Like it can't hurt, you know? Yeah. I mean, some of us get out there and we're like... I mean, I know I ride a few that I'm like, I could use a little patchouli. <laughs> Lavender. All right, let's hear, speaking of all natural, let's hear about Daily Dose. And then we'll be back. We're going to have Jessica Trupon as one of our terrific auditors and an amazing artist. Non-GMO whole food nutrition is the basis of the entire Daily Dose equine program. We never forget that natural is better and simplicity is key. Our full line of specialty horse feeds is unique in the industry. We start with high-quality, non-GMO grains that are flame-roasted for safety and better digestibility. And then we add non-GMO alfalfa, timothy, peas, sunflower seeds, and flax. Your horse will enjoy unsurpassed balanced core nutrition with elevated levels of vitamins, zinc, and copper, prebiotics, probiotics, and electrolytes in every mouthful. Find the perfect formulation for your horse at DailyDoseEquine.com. Select Daily Dose Equine formulations are available nationwide through Chewy.com and TractorSupply.com. I would like to welcome to the show our awesome auditor, Jessica Troop. Not only is she an auditor, she is an adopter of a horse and hound rescue. How's Ivan doing? Oh, he's doing great. Oh my gosh. He's, he recently competed in some local thoroughbred hunter shows oh, wow. and yeah, he, he actually came away with some first places. My trainer <laughs> was riding him though. It wasn't me because I'm still coming back from a pregnancy, but yeah, he, I, I am so impressed with him and I've started riding him again after that and he's he's just amazing it's i feel like i've been given the keys to a ferrari <laughs> <laughs> i'll never forget when jessica called me she's like hi i'm looking for and listed what she was looking for in a horse and i was like e- yeah, I have that, like, right now. <laughs> I, I, I have that horse for you in my barn right now. And so she adopted him, and it's just, um, it's been such a pleasure to watch your progress with him. Those darn kids mess everything up with horses, but I'm glad you're at least able to now get on him. Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. He's he's wonderful. I, 10 out of 10 for, for adopting horses from Jamie. <laughs> oh, that is, that is a very kind thing to say. Thank you very much. So one of the cool things about you, besides your amazing ability to choose awesome horses, is you are an artist. And my Christmas tree is adorned with ornaments that I purchase every year from the drawings that you make. Let's see, who have you done in my horses? We did Zeus one year. Who did We did Miles last year. And this year, you, you contacted me and said, what horse do you want me to put on the Christmas ornament? And I could think of nobody better than our awesome, wonderful lifetime, horse of a lifetime, the Duke. And so you made Duke a part of the Christmas card this year and you have Scooter and Nigel in it. So talk us through like your process. Cause I just sent you like a bunch of pictures of him just standing there. <laughs> yes. I got a, I got an email and it was just titled Duke picks. And so I was <laughs> scrolling through and it had all of his markings and all that. So, but he is just, I, I have listened to this show since what, 2013, I think. So I've, I've, I have heard about Duke for a very long time. So I figure I, I really needed to do him justice in this drawing. So I hope I did. I, I thought it'd be really cute to have the horses putting together a Christmas tree and getting into the holiday spirit. 
So that's that's what we have in the drawing is Duke has the ribbon going around the tree. Nigel is holding an ornament and Scooter has the gifts. He maybe he's going to keep it for himself or <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he'll put it under the tree. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> now, I would like to tell you in the personality style of Duke. I he would like to really thank you for putting a blanket on him when he's in the snow because he does not like being cold. So that was really well done. <laughs> I appreciate Aww. it. I love oh, Nigel's well, I, expression. I, Nigel's looking at Duke like, who the hell are you and why do you have that ribbon? Because <laughs> Nigel just looks pissed. <laughs> and he's a, he, that's the way he looks uh, all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> And Scooter is looking like, I got the gift and I'm out of here. And you knew a section this <laughs> second this picture was done, he's gone with that present. And the Duke is of the personality, like, guys, focus. Yeah, Let's exactly. get the job done. Exactly. He's, like, scolding both of them. This is great. What a, what a cool – every year – is this the fourth or fifth year? Oh, I think the – yeah, but it, yeah, we've had we've had a few of them. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And the nice thing is that you, the audience, can go out and buy them, and you put a store together every year where people can go buy ornaments. They can buy Christmas cards. I use them every year as my Christmas cards, so I get some every year's Christmas cards. I get a mug every year. I still have all my mugs. So we and we let you pick the charity you donate. Actually, you do this out of the kindness of your heart, and you donate the proceeds from this to a charity every year. Who did you? You pick this year? Yeah, so this year there there's a local rescue here in Florida that is near and dear to my heart. It's the Florida Pointer Rescue, but they are an all breed rescue for dogs. And I mean, they have every, they take in everything and from, you know, all kinds of situations. I've seen everything from Chihuahuas up to Great Danes. And I know they got their start with pointers because pointers can be a breed that is not necessarily for everyone. It's a wonderful breed, but tons of energy. And it does require, you know, some people with special understanding of them to help place them. But these guys, they, they take animals from, you know, the, the euthanasia list, they take in owner surrenders, you know, things they, you know, even dogs found on the streets, and they just, they do so much good, but, you know, they were hit kind of hard because we had two hurricanes come through Florida and they, they really took a hit with, with that. They had some property damage and their, their donations were kind of down following that because understandably people in the local community were kind of focusing on, you know, dealing with their own damages and rebuilding. So I figure, you know, they could, they could really use it this year and and they do just such good work in the community. I got to tell you, Jessica, I didn't get to tell you this, but next door, the farm that's right next door to our new farm, they have five acres, no horses, but it's completely fenced in and they have three pointers. I'm not exactly sure which kind, but they're pointers. And Every day, we see the three of them at the bottom of a tree looking up, and you know there's a squirrel in there. (laughs) But they will sit there for an hour, and they don't move. They just stare. It's, that poor squirrel. I know. <laughs> God, how terrifying. Every day we go out and they're at a different tree just staring. And you go out an hour later and they haven't moved an inch. It's so incredible, their patience. <laughs> they are they are interesting dogs, that's for sure. We have a we have a rescued German short hair pointer. He didn't come from that rescue. He came from shelter in South Georgia. But yeah, he's he's very different. It's different from a lab or any other kind of field hunting breed. He's just, you know, he watches things and, you know, but my goodness, he's even at 14 has a ton of energy. <laughs> yeah, they, they do run around a lot. It's like you need a yard, a big yard for them, for sure. Well, I'm glad yeah. you picked that. And your drawing this year is so damn cute. I mean, every year I say you can't get cuter and every year you get cuter. So, so well done. I know the auditors are loving it. I think there's order, orders already coming in. I will post a link to the Cafe Press where you can buy the ornaments or whatever you want with the year's design. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Please do go get something. I know a lot of our listeners buy an ornament every year with the designs on them, and they have all of them. I know Jamie and I have all of them. Did you order yours yet, Jamie? I ordered mine this morning. I totally did, like, the other day. I mean, I, I'm already on it. You know, it's, it's coming. And I did want to tell everybody, <laughs> I ordered 12 ornaments, and I w- we will be doing, last year during Radiothon, we actually posted trivia questions in the chat, and then the first one to answer it 
live in the chat got an ornament, well, we're going to do two of those every hour. So we will be doing trivia questions, and usually those questions are about the shows and us, so you have to be a fan to win that one. But, but we will be giving away some during, during trivia as well. So we look forward to... We look forward to having everybody have one of these ornaments in on their tree this year. And Jessica, you're terrific. You do this out of the kindness of your heart every year, and we really do appreciate it. Oh, well, I'm so glad everyone enjoys it. It's it's fun for me, and I'm glad I'm glad everyone else likes it too. <laughs> oh, and by the way, congratulations! Tell us about the new one. The oh, re- the baby. Yeah, the reason you couldn't <laughs> ride. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was born in May. So he's about to turn six months old. His name is Ethan. And he he has a big sister who is six, and she has been a helper. Her name is Sophia. Sophia's the so, cutest thing ever, um, Jamie. She's the cutest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think you, you met her yeah. once at, at one of the yeah, events we, we went to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Ethan's the new the new member of the clan here and you know, hopefully one day we'll get him we'll get him his own little set of Ariat boots and <laughs> a pony. get him get him sitting up on a pony. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jessica, congratulations and thanks again. We really do appreciate it. I'll put a link to the Cafe Press where you can go buy your your HRN holiday swag. Get it get it early and buy a bunch to help support the Florida Pointer Rescue. Well, Jamie, guess what's going on this weekend that makes the entire northeast part of this country that horse owners very happy? I don't know, because it, it sounded like we were going to say snow, but that doesn't make people happy. Equine Affair. Equine oh, Affair in Massachusetts happens yeah. this weekend. Everybody's setting up their booths. I see all kinds of pictures. Of course, we do the Equine Affair podcast, so I know all about it. And one of the biggest booths there every year is State Line Tech. You'll find them there. If you're heading to Equine Affair this weekend, do visit their booth. They always have stuff on sale, and the booth is always enormous, just like it is at Rolex. So, Rolex at, Land, <laughs> at Kentucky. <laughs> just at that event. So it, it's always vague, and they always have tons of stuff. If you want, if you're not heading there, you can head over to their website, statelinetech.com. Right now, they have their Dublin footwear highlighted, and we all. I remember when Dublin. Speaking of Rolex, I remember when Dublin first came to Rolex. It was like a huge deal that first year that they came to Rolex, and about a thousand people bought those boots because it was the first tall, really good looking waterproof boots, you know, that they had that were affordable. And I was going to say that weren't a thousand dollars. Weren't a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars. And a bunch of people bought them. I remember Jennifer was working at the one booth that sold them that year. So I wear yes. Dublin every day. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. You yes. wear the tall boots? The river boots? Uh, yep. Yeah. I have well, Dublin River boots that I wear them all winter because you can ride in them too. Yeah. That's right. They're made for riding. And I'm an inventor and like all inventors wear these boots. So, yeah. And, they ha- and if you really live like where Lisa Kelly does or up there or Emily does in Alaska, they have the Yukon boots as well, which are really good looking, but a little warmer. So head on our statelinetech.com right now. Well, to get everybody in the mood a little bit for the holidays and for a radiothon and get your creative juices flowing, you only have nine days yet to get your song entries and your poem entries and your your talking story entries in. Remember, if you submit a voicemail entry for Radiothon, you're going to get three entries into the prizes. We have over $4,000 in prizes this year. I know because I just had to create all the prize banners for Radiothon, and it took me two days. So we're going to away a ton of stuff this year as we do every year at Radiothon and we need your voicemails it's my favorite part of every year is hearing you guys and your creativity and this is from last year this was from hour one from Jamie and I's hour last year this will just get you warmed up and get your juices flowing and get you to get your ads in go to HolidayRadiothon.com You have reached the Horse Radio Network voicemail line. Please leave your voicemail after the tone. (laughs) These holiday voicemails are brought to you by all of us at Kentucky Performance Products. Happy holidays, horse world. It's time for Radiothon. It's been a couple years. For Glenn and Jamie's marathon, bringing all of us good cheer. All the hosts are gathered, the listeners are here. For six hours of or 
mercy fun for the holidays this year. Lots of horse interviews, songs and voicemails too, stories, poems, and trivia for all of us to hear. We thank the wonderful sponsors for supporting HRN. Now let's settle in and listen. The fun is about to begin. Hi there, this is Holly from Elmira, Oregon, and I've got 10 things I've purchased because of HRN, specifically horses in the morning. One, horse trailer, 20,000. Two, paint horse with navicular, 800. Three, unhandled, newly gelded at Arabian, 500. Four, Monty Roberts University, $100 a year for three years. Five, 12-year quarter horse, anyone can ride, but no one can load in a trailer. Six, two saddles, 1,400. Seven, horse property, 425,000. Eight, Chinese medicinal specialist for my old dog who also specializes in acupuncture, $480. Nine, Basset Hound puppy born on Halloween and coming soon. Would I change anything? Absolutely not. I love you guys, and my husband commonly hears me say, Jamie said this, or Glenn recommends we use that. He hasn't a clue that we are just internet friends. Merry Christmas, everyone. You know Duke and Miles and Ace and Effie, Maverick and Pharaoh and even Zeus. But do you recall... Jamie's most famous horse of all. Joey the thoroughbred had some very rough first years. And when Jamie found him, she could even say he's small. All the competing horses used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Joey show them his heart of gold. Then one early February, I came to say, Joey, with your jump so high, won't you let me love you tonight? And so I own Joey, as we jump and prance with glee. Joey, the thoroughbred, you'll go down in his story. At the Florida Horse Farm over Two Acres Ranch, the holiday radiothon begins, shaking us from our post-Thanksgiving trance. Gather round, HRN listeners, by the fire's gentle glow for tales of horses and Christmas fails where cocktails freely flow. Listeners and auditors, we have so much to say about our HRN family with whom we share the love of horses each day. Glenn, Jennifer, Jamie, all of the hosts have created a community that we treasure the most. Voicemails have poured in to help spread the cheer. Thanks to sponsor Stateline Tech, it's our favorite way to end the year. Kentucky Performance Products and Benefab 2, we simply couldn't have the Radiothon without you. Horses in the Morning kicks us off with horsey tales to tell. Retired racehorse radio guests share a makeover that went so well. Heels down happy hour, we toast in pure delight. Adulting with horses, surely cracking us up all night. Weather beat as blankets, our prizes so divine, they add excitement to the party like sparkling wine. Everyone hopes for something flashy to win, especially if it's a mug featuring Miles Scooter and Nigel's grin. As the evening winds down, we raise the final glass to our beloved ponies with noses stuck in the dwindling winter grass. So here's to cocktails and horses in the season so bright. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Podcast play, are you listening? Participate, Glenn's insisting. A beautiful sound and stories abound on HRN's Radiothon. Gone away is bad weather. HRN brings us all together. We'll hear great songs and guests all day long listening to the Holiday Radiothon. On the website, we can leave a voicemail about epic fails or our favorite horse. If we're lucky, we win a great prize. Either way, we'll have fun, of course. When Jamie's on video, ain't it thrilling? Though the sweaters are kind of chilling, the hosts will frolic and play the HRN way, hosting Holiday Radio Thon. Later on, they'll conspire to provide guests who inspire 
so we can face unafraid the plans that we made while listening to Holiday Radiothon, listening to Holiday Radiothon, listening to Holiday Radiothon. Happy holidays from Sharon, Ed, Moose, Iggy, Judy, and the rest. We did. We rented a cabin in the woods. We did a VRBO and stayed in this beautiful cabin. And it's a heck of a drive to get up and down there because I was like, I am not cooking dinner this whole vacation. Well, yes, you are because you can't drive on those roads in the dark. <laughs> so we went hill? grocery shopping. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was intense. It was intense. But it was fantastic. We had a great time. Now, Glenn, you gave me all these suggestions of things that we have to do. And I showed them all to Chad and he said no to pretty much all of them. And the only one I really cared about was Dollywood. Well, he, one of the days he's like, we're going to go hiking. And he found this hike. And I'm like, I think as a horse person, we don't view hiking the same as people as that <laughs> walk through the woods. Like, I'm like, this could be so much better if I was on a horse. And Anna's with me. And we're like, oh, my God. Like, why are we not riding right now? This would be so much better. And Chad and Lucas, it was really a neat hike. We went to this, like, old school house in the woods. It was really cool. But I'm like, this could be so much better. I just don't appreciate hiking. And maybe some of you girls are with me. We just don't appreciate hiking them as much as non-horse oh, people. Jennifer. Because like, <laughs> God, I mean, cool. Like you're all walking through the woods and we pass other people walking through the woods and people just walk through the woods for fun. I'd rather ride through the woods. So not a super fan, but I will tell you that we did find one thing. Have you heard of the place? So Pigeon Forge, Dollywood, all or Gatlinburg, Gatlinburg they're yeah. all like super kitsy. Like, oh, it's, it's like the beach, sm- as, the beach boardwalk in the mountains. I was like, it's upgraded Branson and yes. like downgraded yes. Vegas. Yes. I'm like, it, it was weird to be driving through Pigeon Forge and not see casinos everywhere because I felt like I was going through like baby Vegas. Um, it was crazy. <laughs> but I saw this store and I was like, pull the car over. It's called, it was a, it's a boot store and it's called buy one, get two oh, free yes. boots. Yes. It's enormous. Oh my God. Everybody got boots. Oh, we really? all got boots. Yeah. Everybody got but boots for everybody because you buy one, you get two pair free. Yes, they are marked up from a normal, original, like regular price. But still, it's like they were free, Glenn. It's like they were all it's free. Good. It's good you guys drove home. <laughs> Lucas got a pair of cowboy boots. Chad got two pairs of boots. Anna got a pair of boots. I have boots for everybody. I think because if you buy two, buy one, you get two free. But then the next two are like a third of the price of the most expensive one. That's how it works. It was crazy. And uh, it was awesome. We were just like this boot up a fantastic event. Yeah, it's a good thing we drove. I mean, because like we bought so much stuff. But then we went to, and then we went hiking, and then, you know, there was an amazing pizza place in Gallenberg. It was so good. And we drank beer and Chad and I drank beer and pizza. It was awesome. We had a great time. It was so much more fun than I thought it would be. Especially when you drive through town, you're like, where am I? Why am I in like upgraded Branson? <laughs> Please tell me you stopped at one of the moonshine tastings. And No, God, no, I'm not drinking that stuff. <laughs> No, thank you. There's many of um, those too. <laughs> but then we went to Dollywood the next oh, day and it opened at 11 and we went to Dollywood on Monday. Oh my God. That place is amazing. When you hear Dollywood, you think of like, you're going to walk into this tiny little park and there's going to be like a big animatronic Dolly pardon saying, come on in y'all. You know, like that's <laughs> the impression that I had. This was the cleanest amusement park. All the employees were super nice and like took pride in their job. Every the rides were ridiculous. Oh, I think some, they was, have some wicked roller coasters there. Oh my god, I'm used to going to Frontier City, which is like 600 years old and it's in Oklahoma City, and that's kind of like the amusement park we go to. Oh my god, Dollywood was awesome! Like, it was awesome. And so, it was at, and the good news is, it was at like 20% capacity on a Monday before oh, the holidays, you know? Oh, every the kids rode everything. I rode the lightning rod mm. right when we got there, and I didn't ride anything for about Five hours. <laughs> and Chad thought they were all just boring, right? Oh, he loved it. Actually, he was like, I mean, Lucas loved it. They were ranking their rides. They wrote everything in the park that was open. It was 
unbelievable. I mean, because it's this really cool, un- insane roller coasters in the mountains. And and you're like, and they're they deceiving this- when you get on the ride. You don't realize really what you're getting. Because uh, you can't see because yeah. you're in the mountains. Yes. I wrote, Chad got on one, that lightning rod. He was like, that is as close to feeling like a fighter pilot as I have felt since I retired. Is that the one that goes in the building and then goes straight up? No, no. that's okay. that's, that's the, 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 the mine ride. Because <laughs> Lucas, he was like, you should ride this with us. And I was like, I can't see it. I'm not going on it. <laughs> I, I can't you didn't. see it. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, I, my body was jostled enough on the first ride. The other other ride, the only other ride I like to do is those free falls where you get mm. on the little thing and it shoots, you, drops you straight down. I like that one. But other than that, like, they had a absolute great time, but it was funny because like they all rode and I just sat and held everybody's stuff. And at one point I'm like, I'm just going to go walk around. And I come back and I meet up with Chad and he was like, these kids, they're fighting. They're out of control. He was like, they're so, it's, it's so bad. And I was like, babe, are you new? Like <laughs> it's three o'clock and they haven't eaten in like eight hours because they wouldn't stop me lunch. Cause they were like, let's go to this ride. Oh my God. And I, so the, the closest place was the pretzels, the big giant pretzels. And I was like, get two. And he was like, oh, no, I don't want those. I'm like, just need food. I gave him the food. He was like, Oh my God, that really works. <laughs> I know Brad it's soaks up hangry. everything. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make this up. Their like, food I'm is good at Hollywood for a- too. It's for amusement park food. It's really good. We yeah. didn't really spend all we left to eat. I mean, because I there's there's not a ton. They did have one veggie burger. Yeah, I was I the only one. They have very many food. veggie things to tell you. About. They had one veggie burger in the whole entire park. Yeah. It was fantastic. <laughs> the barbecue uh, is good was- for everybody going there that actually eats meat. The barbecue is good. Yeah. And then, so we played some games. We won some stuffed animals and we, I just was, I was awesome. We were popping balloons and I was shooting water guns in the holes. Like, and it's terrible. They, they're all riding these rides and I'm not riding them and I'm tired of sitting there. So I was like, I'm going to go buy myself some vouchers and win some stuffies. <laughs> so I go down. By the time the kids got off the next ride, I was like, look at all the stuffies I won. <laughs> Did you go to the got- museum at all? No, we never went in the museum. I'm telling you what, these the the, the roller coaster rides were the lines were like ten minutes long. Oh god, that would be so, a joy. I mean, we waited an hour the last time for all. Oh of them. my gosh, yeah. we just went every. It just was like oh, that's so next, fun. next, next. They just rode and rode and rode and rode, and they had the whole place. I mean, it was like Insta Christmas decorations. I mean, and the same. The only problem was the same four Christmas songs played the whole day. And I was like, <laughs> I need to upgrade your playlist. Doesn't Dolly have a lot of Christmas songs? Yeah, I heard her Tony Bennett and Dolly Parton. Baby, it's cold outside about 65 yeah. times. <laughs> but it was really great. A really good recommendation, Glenn, because like oh, that park cool. was. It's one unbel- of my favorite amusement parks in the country. Uh, Lucas was like, this is better than Universal. And I was is. like, hold Hold on. He was like, no, he was like, cause there's no lines. The rides are unbelievable. It, 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 they, they loved it. So if any, and I thought I just, I grew up in Georgia. I grew up in Atlanta. We never went to Dollywood. We always went to Florida and this was so much more affordable. It wasn't price gouging at all. They had a fantastic military discount. I just could not, I was so impressed. I was so impressed. And the place was super fun and, and long live Dolly and long live Dolly world. And everybody, Everybody in the shirt had, and the whole park had shirts. It was like, Dolly for president. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, she didn't win. If only. Um, but, <laughs> if only. <laughs> but I mean, she, she's such an awesome woman that it's great to see her legacy that she's created in that town is just awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys had a great time. I'm so glad. And now it makes me want to go back again. I loved it. I loved it. We want to go back too. I'm not driving though. No, never <laughs> done that again. But I got my PMF certification on the 12, 13 hour drive. <laughs> At least you so did something right. important while you were driving. <laughs> I know. All right, you want to do some weird news? Oh, God. Here we go. Time to learn why some days you're embarrassed to be part of the human race in Jamie's Weird News. That's right, you guys. If you are ever looking through the news wherever you get it and you're like, that's so weird, send it to me, email it. But check this out. We have a new fancy email for weird news. It's called weird news at horseradionetwork.com. There's a whole email address for weird news. So please send them on weird news at horseradionetwork.com. And I would like to thank, like I said, it was a slow week. Y'all were a little busy with other stuff. Delia, Amy, Alicia, Sarah, and Kaylin 
all sent me weird news stories to weirdnews at horseradionetwork.com and it is much appreciated. Let's start with I, 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 this first story I'm doing for you, Glenn, because the, the abject terror that I felt when you were having all those wells drilled – Oh. And 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 you have your well drilled right, and like is all the failed wells that they drilled yeah. are all those plugged up and filled in? Yes, but they leave the pipe in the ground, and then they just fill it up. I guess I don't know. Do, listen, you need to confirm. You need to confirm. I want you to go on the well and make sure it's all filled up because firefighters and animal services personnel in California, in Riverside County, California, had to save butter. His name is Butter, and he's a mini, and he fell through the plywood covering of an old well and dropped 20 feet down, and the well is 60 feet deep, and they had to go in and save poor Butters. He's a mini, and he needed to be saved, and he's this little Palomino mini, and I mean, they all thought he was just going to be dead, and they were able to pull Butter out of the well, and he is fine. Of course, he he's, is. he's a, a mini. Fine. He's a mini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Apparently, those, those old wells were really wide and, you know, really wide. They would fit a well uh, mini. Yeah. Yeah. But he was inspected by the veterinarian, said it was just minor injuries sustained in the actual fall, but they were able to get him out. And those people that save horses from that situation are just awesome. And firemen just deserve. How many, All the love. how many people did he bite on the way out is what I want to know. I know, right? Well, I'm <laughs> here. I, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, six people that firefighters and like the hard hats with the lights on it and like three owners and poor little butter just looks exhausted. <laughs> he just, he looks wet. He looks tired. He looks miserable, but everybody's wearing helmets. So that's probably a good idea. Yeah, probably good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see. Let's start with – this one's great because in Canada, they have a – in British Columbia, there's a half marathon that people do in Canada. I don't know why people do things like that, but they do. And apparently, in the middle of this marathon, this goat – like joins in on the marathon and is running with everybody during this race. And – and he, run, he runs miles, miles with this marathon group and people are taking pictures and like, look at this goat going with us, taking pictures and taking videos. Well, the goat owner just casually wakes up and gets out of bed, picks up her phone and she's like, oh my God. That's my goat. <laughs> did the goat have a number on it? Please tell me you got the a number. The goat did not have a number on it, but funny enough... As the marathon went on, she is trying to find her goat and she's tracking it as the goat is running with the group. And she had to track the, the social media posts to find her goat as it's running through the crowd. And she ended up, she had to get some food and some of his favorite grain. She shook the bucket and he left the group and came back to her. She snapped the leash on him and then took him to the finish line where he got a medal. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. I love it. I love it. Good for him. Okay, so this is a crazy story. So you know the Wizard of Oz, and everybody knows the ruby slippers, right? They're Do her, Dorothy's ru ruby slippers worn by Judy Garland. And did you know that about 10, 2005, I think they were stolen from a museum? No, I know they went for a lot of money when they sold at auction last, but I didn't know they were stolen. Well, he had the guy who bought her bought those shoes that he paid for a lot of money for, donated them, loaned them to the Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids. However, in the middle of that summer, someone went into the Judy Garland Museum, took a hammer, smashed the display case, and stole the slippers. And that was in 2005. And their whereabouts remained a mystery until the FBI recovered them in 2018. Okay? Really? Now, the slippers are for sale again. But they're on the auction block, whatever. You can go buy the ruby slippers. The funny part is, the guy who stole the slippers initially, and this is what makes it weird news, his name is Terry John Martin. He was 76 years old when he was sentenced to stealing the slippers. Do you know why he stole the slippers? I have no idea. Is it a fetish? No. Oh. 
It's stupider. <laughs> <laughs> he smashed the glass in the museum's door because he wanted to quote, he wanted to pull off one last score after his associate that has connections to the mob told him that the shoes, because the shoes were insured for a million dollars. Right. And that was kind of part of the news thing was that they sold for this much money, but they're insured for 1 million and his connection to the mob told Terry John Martin, they have to be adorned with rare, real jewels because they're insured for a million dollars. So this just idiot, a bunch of dumbasses or what? He thinks that the ruby slippers are actually rubies. rubies. And he goes into the museum, smash and grabs these plastic (laughs) slippers and steals them. I don't know how he was caught, but I think that this is like a hallmark. Like what are the true crime mystery shows? This has to be like some sort of true crime podcast. I would like to know the whole story, but this guy Good. They I love that it's in quotes that he attempted to pull off quote one last score after an associate with connections to the mob told him the shoes had to be adorned with real jewels to justify their one million dollar insured value. I am uh, just picturing them finding them in a self storage unit full of crappy stolen over the years. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dude, and I mean, obviously, it's all crappy. Couldn't sell. <laughs> they're real rubies, duh. I mean, how, it, mm, that's just really stupid. Oh my god. We haven't been to Florida yet. I'm so proud. I know. And we're going to go back to Canada, eh? I mean, this is two Canada? in Canada. Two? Yeah. yeah. I know. It's crazy. California, Canada. Let's see. Where was the Ruby Slippers? I think that's in Texas, actually. So, yeah, you're escaping today because we are now going. I, just the title alone. Okay. I'll just read you the headline and you'll know everything you need to know about this news story. You know what a Zamboni is, right? Ice hockey. Ice hockey. There's the little machines that the people drive and they melt the ice and freeze the ice and like smooth out ice for hockey. Okay. So here's the headline. Drunk Zamboni driver (laughs) in kangaroo costume arrested for DUI after crashing into the boards. (laughs) Oh my God. There's a lot going on there. (laughs) <laughs> so apparently there was a couple different hockey games in this smaller rink. That's not a professional hockey rink. It's just in Quebec, Canada there. It was in between two hockey games and the driver who was, they said inexplicably dressed as a kangaroo was driving the Zamboni and ran poosh into the boards, damaging the doors of the rink. Well, there was somebody that was watching and they were like, I don't think that guy's. I don't think that guy's sober. So one of the people in in the like uh, the the crowd called nine one one because Canadians are so nice. He's like, we've got to make sure that the the Zamboni's taken care of, eh? We got to make sure that he's okay. And so they called the police, and he got a DUI. <laughs> you can't actually get a DUI for driving a Zamboni drunk in Canada. Now you know. <laughs> That's it, actually. That's it. You, you learn so much with this show. Okay. So if you want to send a weird news story so you get more of them next week than you did this week. Weird news at horseradionetwork.com. Y'all don't y'all don't make me regret giving it its own email, okay? Weird <laughs> news at horseradionetwork.com. All right. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We'll be back on Friday with another episode for you. And actually, Mary and Jennifer will be back tomorrow with a training episode. So look for Mary Kitz Miller tomorrow, and then Jamie and I will be back on Friday. Get your really bads at it. Really bad. Really bad ads into Jennifer at Horse Radio <laughs> Network dot com. I still have this cold and I'm on cold medicine. I think it's affecting my brain. Yeah, that's that's what it is. That's sure, what it is. buddy. Sure. <laughs> All right, buddy. Either yeah, that or the down. surgeon missed. I'm not sure which. I'm going back to bed. I'm so <laughs> <bet> tired. <you> <laughs> no post show today, guys. We went a little long and I'm still sick.